So, um, a, a member of IPAC, an International Parliamentary Alliance, where we also meet with senators across the, the, the Atlantic and other, other parts of the world, trying to promote and be the voice for those who struggle being heard, not the least in China, where we see the, the repression is ongoing and increasing. Yes, and I have promised to tell the story about the pillar shame. And it could take hours, but I'm trying to take it really quickly. Uh, the pillar of shame, this is not that one. This is only the model. This one uh, I made in 94. Uh, and then I built the big one. The big one is like the other one. It's eight meter high. And uh, the weight is about two or three tons. Uh, and I made this sculpture to make, it, uh, to make a mark who, so sculpture who remember the story. Because often the story goes going like this and you, you, you forgot everything. And especially in a state like China, you want to forget a lot of story. So when I make the pillar of shame, then I decide my first pillar of shame should be placed in, in, in China to remember what happened in the Xinjiang crackdown. Uh, I had something to do with the Xinjiang crackdown because I was one of them who helped uh, the information to go out in China in these days where the tanks go in because I have a fax system. So it was a lot of people who helped uh, the financial side and the New York Times to bring the message out in Chinese. And I couldn't read what I'm doing, I just put it out in my fax. It's a thousand and thousand facts in this moment. So this was uh, the moment I decided to do something to remember what happened in Cinnamon Square. And I think specific Cinnamon Square was really, really specific. specific. It was like a festival. The people was quite peaceful, they played guitar, there was beautiful weather, uh, the dancing, the talk, the big theater, the tent, and, and everything like that. This was like scene 68 in, uh, in Paris or something like that. Uh, and then they believe on the system. They believe they could talk and then the system will change. But then the tanks come and everybody getting killed and arrest, and you know the story. The rest is the story. So, I decide my first pillar of shame should stand in China to remember what happened in Xinjiang. But it's not possible to get an eight meter high sculpture inside China. You can't do that. Uh, the only way we could put it in China was to put it in Hong Kong just before hand over and then we will uh, let China take over in Hong Kong and they took Hong Kong and they took the pillar of shame. Uh, this was my plan. Uh, it was a quite good plan, uh, but I have uh, some problem because the democracy movement in China don't like my sculpture. Uh, they said this is a crazy thing to using art. Uh, we can't using that. They don't believe on that. So uh, I have one friend in Europe, a Chinese friend, and he go to uh, the leader of the democracy movement and ask them to make him, uh, to take care of that. And they say, okay, maybe it's a good idea. And since we have been, I've been friends with Hong Kong and the Hong Kong movement, we put it up two weeks before handover. China do everything to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to not to let it go in. Uh, but it was not possible. It was too strong because it was still British territorium and was supported by uh, Chris Patton, who was uh, the leader of England, uh, the government uh, at this time. So we put it in in Hong Kong, and we was about uh, two hundred thousand on on the on the finances. It was really, really, and was and everybody don't know what happened. So we put it up in the fourth of June, uh, and all the time we sit with the candlelight. It's a tradition in Hong Kong. You're sitting with light and to remember all the people who got killed. We call the candlelight virtual. It's forbidden now. Uh, uh, we do that every year in Victoria Park, and the Pillar of Shame was a part of that. After that, they're going out to the University of Hong Kong, uh, and they make a lot of noise. Uh, you must know something about Hong Kong at this moment. In, in, in this moment in Hong Kong, everybody believed China will change. In this moment, China was in, in a good direction in a way. We have trade, we have uh, a global discussion, 
uh, more and more, China uh, open more and more, and I think a lot of people in Hong Kong believe uh, China will be like Hong Kong. But China promised uh, uh, Hong Kong and the rest of the world, we will make a system, one country, China, and two system. One system is uh, the Chinese system, and another system for Hong Kong, which look like the rule in Belgium or in, uh, in uh, Britain or whatever, uh, like the Western world's rule. Uh, so everybody believe on changing. And uh, it goes well for nearly 15 years, 10 and 15 years, it goes uh, quite good. The democracy movement work inside Hong Kong to make develop of, of, the, of, of a justice system and uh, a, a union and this kind of thing. But then Xi Jinping go to the power and take the power. And the last eight years, it has been the, the opposite role. China has making more and more like it was in the old time in Mao Zedong. Uh, they can take the power and they use this power to change Hong Kong. And starting to make the small democracy movement, the small democracy system there was, and they attack the freedom of expression. And all the press and all the people and the sculpture and all the art. So the beginning for about eight years ago, and there was a big, big fight in Hong Kong. Everybody know that. You have seen the big demonstration. Uh, 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 and they go, sometimes uh, we won and sometimes we lose, but, but there was a big discussion. And the whole world are looking what happened in Hong Kong. Nobody could, s could really imagine what it ended with. And then Corona come for about four years ago. And I did not, didn't know what happened if Corona not come. But Corona come and then all the people disappearing from the street. They couldn't go out. Uh, and then the whole movement crashed out and China's military take over and arrest a lot of people who fight for their freedom in Hong Kong. Because they couldn't defend any people because of the Corona thing. And uh, a lot of people was disappearing from Hong Kong, I think about 400,000 people are going away from Hong Kong. This is activists, this is artists, this is the democracy, it's leader of the democracy, it's leader of the NGO, it's political, it's everybody who has something to say about China. They left Hong Kong uh, and they are now based a lot of places in the whole world, but a lot of them are in Europe and some of them are here also a part of the audience. Uh, so this is a story about the pillar of shame, but the pillar of shame still was there. So you, in a way, the pillar of shame was a symbol, of, but it still was a little bit of Hong Kong back. So the last thing they do, you know, in the old time, you have a canai fool in, in, in the mine. Uh, so this canai fool is, is the cage. Uh, when the canai fool fell down and died, then you know you must go out of the mine. If not you do that, then you die. I think the pillar of shame was this kind of canai fool. So when they take, <coughs> they take the pillar of shame and take it down, then the whole press in the world explode, and there was a lot of fighting against this sculpture. Uh, because they have sent a letter, an ordinary letter, there, there was a lawyer firm from the, uh, from the firm of Hong Kong. Uh, they write to the people who are in jail and say, you have a sculpture in Hong Kong. This is belong to you, and you. We want you to take it back. Uh, you have ten days, and these people are arrested, They're sitting in the jail. They send this letter to them and say, "You must go out and take the sculpture away. If not, then we we'll take it." And we saw that. We hear that about CNN phone us, and then we attack uh, the system and say, "This is not their sculpture. This is still my sculpture." They didn't know that. Uh, the system didn't know it's still my sculpture, but it's my property. So we tell the Hong Kong they couldn't take it away because it's my sculpture. And then the whole system crashed. And these people and this uh, firm who has sent the letter to, to, uh, to the, uh, the Hong Kong people who are in jail, then we started to attack them. This was an American firm. And this is quite important because a thousand of thousands of people and artists around the world make letter to the Mayor Brown, it was 2,000 lawyers uh, in this firm, and ask them to move from Hong Kong and don't take care of this action against the pillar of shame and against the democracy movement. 
uh, I think that was not really interesting in that, uh, the lawyer firm, but then the American government in the Senate, in the Senate of, of, of United States, they take it up and make a hearing. And then uh, say, if you are American based firm, you should know you're not allowed to help the Chinese government to do anything uh, to make the destroying of the human right in Hong Kong. So then the firm must go out uh, from Hong Kong and close the department there. So we make a new standard. What could you do if you are American firm or if you are Western world firm? What can you do to help China with cross Hong Kong? Uh, and this is quite important. And then uh, uh, they go. And then they're starting to put the pillar of shame, they get a new, new firm, a uh, uh, Chinese firm, and then they started to put it down. And then this enormous sculpture, they put it down in the container and put it out uh, in a park from the university. It's a little bit strange because they take the symbol of freedom and put it down in the container and put it out in the park. So it was there for a half a year ago. And a half a year ago, something strange happened. They take the pillar of shame from the park and put it in front of the court where the people from the democracy movement was in jail. So now this sculpture is in a container, in a steel container in front of the court, and then they will use it as a kind of evidence against the people who are arrested inside the parliament, inside the court. So this is a complete crazy story, and in the moment we try to get it out, but it's possible. It's not possible. Uh, we're still waiting. Uh, because this is a kind of evidence. But when it's finished, we hope we can get it out. We never know that. So this is a story about the pillar of shame, and this is a quite famous uh, sculpture and quite famous symbol for what happened in China. Uh, so, so now, David, I will have you to bring it out. How do you do that? I know it's a trap. Okay, it's okay. Well, thank you again for, for coming here and telling the story. And also thank to all the other artists that are here. Because th this is what tyrants do. They silence us. They try to, they go for education, they go for freedom of speech, and they go for freedom of expression and art. That's only a part of their big plan. And we need to keep remembering that. And we need all of us together to keep speaking up against it. And what we have seen, as you said, since Hong Kong was on everyone's, in everyone's eyes after the crackdown and then COVID happened, then people started to forget. And then even more so after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Then everyone looked at that instead. And now people aren't looking as much as Ukraine because they are looking after what happened after Hamas war on, God, on Israel. So the world cannot keep more than one tragedy in their head at one time. And this is why it's so important that we together make people remember that the world needs to stay focused on more things than one at the same time. And this is what you do by being here. And I can only help as much as I can. We can do it politically, we can do it with our policies, but if we don't do it together, we will lose. I think so. Uh, is there any question about the pillar of shame or question about uh, uh, what, what the Param Tiger could do there? If not, let me go, just continue. Okay, continue. Uh, we, at the moment, we, on the, this, we have an exhibition here. This is not about the pillar of shame, this is about art in Hong Kong. All these people who have uh, exhibit here, they are going away from Hong Kong. Uh, for many years ago, some of them. And some of them are sitting there, the two beautiful young people. They have been making this about the Jimmy Lay. Uh, you can talk with them after that. Uh, so, so this is a picture of forbidden art. The reason we do that here, this is to make focus, of course, is make focus for what is the situation in Hong Kong. We have meeting in the parliament yesterday and today about that. But it's also to make focus of what is the situation for art in Hong Kong. And this is a really, really big problem because the art states in uh, Hong Kong is, <coughs> is dominated by the Western world firm. It's Saber, it's Christian, uh, this is Phillips and Bonhams and Art Basel. This is just five 
Uh, it's a good firm. There's nothing wrong with the firm. They're selling art in big, big scale, uh, everywhere in the world, sitting on the, the, highest, the highest level of the art in the whole world. This is okay. And they control the market in Hong Kong. And they have been okay for nearly 100 years. But now it's not okay because this Western world's firm now, they're making censorship. It's not possible to get anything who are critical from China, any painting, any sculpture, any uh, dance, any film, anything you're trying to sell on Hong Kong art market, they denied to put it there. So they help the, the Chinese government to make art censorship in the market. And this is a really, really, really big problem. And it's the same case as somebody, uh, do you remember what the other one, when the Mayor Brown, the, the lawyer firm, tried to put the pillar of shame down. And then <coughs> we attacked this firm. And now the moment we're trying to, to make attention for what are the art firm doing? What are their duty to, uh, to not making censorship in Hong Kong? And this is a reason, one of the reasons we are here, just to show uh, the artists, but also to make a kind of a campaign to, to say, if you want to stay in Hong Kong, this is okay, then you must make a statement, you don't want a censorship art. Do you have any comments to, to that? Well, I... I, I Sorry? <laughs> I think that the world is getting more and more aware of the threat that China is doing to all of us. I mean, the US has been more aware for many years than the Europe has been, but we've seen a change in Europe over the last years. Could you hold it a bit closer? Yeah. Thank you. Um, we've seen a change in Europe over the last years. We saw the freezing of the investment agreement that Europe was planning to do with, with China. Finally, after we fought this for several years, we saw that the European Parliament acknowledged on my initiative, my amendment, the ongoing crimes against humanity and risk of genocide against the Uyghur people. Finally, after three years, the Parliament acknowledged that. And those things make a big difference. And that will affect everything, not only art, but hopefully human rights, because we need to remember that the European Union was started on the ruins of Europe after World War II and the crimes against humanity that we had here. And if we then said, never again, it's not only about Europe, it's about the world. And this is not only our job, it's our reason of existence, to stand up for injustices all over and do all that we can to prevent it. And that includes Hong Kong. Uh, I could uh, thank you to ask your answer about the org here. Um, I have made a check for the work here uh, and ask Amnesty International how many people are in the concentration camp. Because when I talk with my friends who are working, they say that's about three million. This is a lot. Uh, and Amnesty said, maybe it's too much. Maybe there's only one and a half. And we're just talking about, <sighs> never mind, this three million and one and a half is, is a catastrophe. These people are sitting. And they produce. These people who are in the concentration camp, like the Germany, they produce a lot of, of yeah. clothes, a lot of things to the European market. What are, are you, have you an eye on that? And what are you doing with the firm who trying to get uh, Jürgen uh, to produce? What happened when you come to Europe? Do you have anything to say about that? Well, we have, we have banned some products coming from uh, Xinjiang. We have hard customs regulations, but it's not only up to us politicians sitting in this house here. It's up to all of us not buying crap from Temu. We need to do this together. Politician can only do as much. We need to do it together, and that's how we stop this. If we continue to buy that, we're part of the problem. Yes, but the problem is, we should, I buy, for example, this one. Why it is? Where it come from? You never know that. It could come from uh, uh, from Hong Kong, or it could come from Sweden, or from Denmark. But we do have a lot more registration and due, uh, where, where products come from. And we have higher demands and due diligence on large companies to show where all the products from that they use to produce other things are, are being made. So that's more and more coming all over Europe. 
do you think is uh, possible what I'm talking about to to make a statement or something like from Europe and not yet, it takes a long time, this kind of thing, to make a statement for the art industry and say, if you want to stay in Hong Kong, then you must def uh, then you must fight for the freedom for the artist and fight for the freedom to not to censorship the market. Do you think it's possible for European to make a decision like that? I think this is one of the things that we need to be smart with and do together with parliamentarians from other countries. So I will bring this to London tomorrow night when I go there to meet the IPAC Alliance and other politicians that are working closely with everything related to China on Friday at Westminster. So I will bring that with me there and hopefully we can get a stronger majority because that's how we can affect a country like China. I mean, Sweden alone, we have no chance. Europe have a stronger chance because then we are their, their, their biggest customer. But if we do it on a global scale, that's where we can make a difference. Oh, this sounds great. Give, give him a hand. Yeah, yeah. because, uh, but I will send you the paper, then you could take a look and see. Maybe this is a possibility, because we have talking about as artists for a meeting about uh, one hour ago, and we will try to support it with making some action against the, uh, uh, the, uh, the action houses, and we will try to, to put some uh, a happy a, a, a happening or something like that when the auction houses are open in London or other places, but but the artists we are quite weak. We are we are strong because we make a lot of art, but in a way we are weak because we don't have the political power. So we need uh, support yeah. for somebody like you who could support that and say, uh, because you are the people who have the real power. No, may I, no, this is the people with the money who have the real power. But but you also have a real power. So I think it could be really happy for us to getting uh, connected to somebody like you who could uh, support us and help us to making some rules in, in the system of uh, But you know, each person is strong. And we saw that not the least on Tiananmen Square. One person can make a difference. And if we do it together, that's even better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Did we have uh, any question about this? Yeah. I can say something. Could you say it? Hi. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I actually have questions. Like, um, so I know uh, we actually quite uh, wondering about the recent status of the peel out chain. So, where is it? Do you know where is it? And also, um, why? It's really shocked to many people when they witness the, um, the removing, what the removing is happening. This happens in the midnight. There's lots of, surrounded by lots of scaffolds. And even you see the university send lots of security guards surrounding the pillar of shame and really, really being ashamed of being pictured. A lot of journalists trying to report what happened to the people. Can't be imagined that we happening in Hong Kong, but they, they feel they're doing something very shameful that they remove it in a very, very secret way. So what do you think about this? I I'm really think they were shameful when they do that. They know they do the wrong thing. And it was Christmas evening, uh, the 23 of December. They move it out in the middle of the night. They, 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 they put a defense around the whole university area and uh, put a lot of clothes up. So nobody could film it from the top. Uh, I, was, I think we have two or three photos. It's really, really difficult. And all the student was in holiday uh, around. So, and then they started to, to bring it down and they use an ordinary uh, firm to do that. We have, I have made an offer and said, we will come to take it down. We will do it for free. We have a transport, we have trucks, we have everything. And I said, you must not arrest me, but if I come, they will take it down slowly and we will bring it back to Denmark. So this was not a discussion about uh, we not will help them or not. We want to help them and we want to take it down because it's quite difficult to take this big town, this big sculpture down. But they use an ordinary, uh, what do you call it, uh, the people, or not a firm who are trying to build building. Uh, and you could see that when the sculpture, this is the sculpture, ah, it's quite heavy, this one. Uh, so then they take it there and then they break. So we know the sculpture is a two part now. Uh, 
So this is breaking here in the middle, and we know uh, some of the uh, base is uh, smashed. Uh, so we could see of some of the few picture getting out. That's a quite iconic uh, photo. I think it was CNN or, or, or something like to take this photo. But they, they have this only the darkness, and then they have put white clothes around it, and then there was 12 people like the uh, like the last supper around it in yellow in yellow helm and this photo go all over the world christmas evening where they carry this big sculpture out like a coffin or something like this it was really really there's a lot of simple because when you do something with a sculpture or artwork then you make a new simple and a new simple and simple so in a way they make new art of that uh, but they destroy it and put it into the uh, container, and we believe this is still intact. There's a lot of damage on that. And I have decided if I get it out one day, then I will put it together with all the damage. In the beginning, I think, oh, and then I bring it back to Denmark and repair it. But now I think it's much better to, 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 to put a, a steel construction inside, and then you can see all the damage around it. Uh, because it's it's, it's uh, showing what happened with the democracy movement in, in Hong Kong. So I will do that, and they know I will do that. And this is the reason I don't want to have it, uh, I put it down. So, so this was what happened this night. And since we are really trying to get it out, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, writing uh, with the government. Uh, normally, they don't answer me, but sometimes they answer me and say, no, we have taken it because of the uh, against the security law to have this kind of thing. And we have made a defense for that because when we put it there, we, we only uh, give it to the, to, the, to the movement to exhibit it for many, many years. The plan was, uh, we, we sort of, we, we believe in this plan. The plan was we put it in Hong Kong, enter China and uh, change, and then we'll put it on Cinemaing Square. This was our plan, it's completely crazy, but we, we thought that. We thought that the, the world would change. But uh, Hong Kong changed, uh, and then they take it down. Uh, so so, so when, when, they, when they attack it, then uh, I was quite surprised because it's still by sculpture. And this is, they have a big problem, because there is any law in Hong Kong where we can confiscate private property. This cost a lot of money, this kind of sculpture. A lot of money, many million dollars. Uh, so if you have this kind of sculpture, then you must pay if you destroy it, or you must pay if you keep it. So it's still my sculpture. And uh, so we have a big fight now to get it out. Uh, it's not about money, it's about the sculpture to get it out. Uh, and we still have this fight. Uh, so what happened and what it ended, well, we don't know yet. We have talked about to make a court, uh, to take them to court. Uh, we have to finish and then sue them for 20 million dollars or something like that. Uh, so, and then we'll give the money to the, to the movement of democracy. Uh, but uh, it's quite expensive to do that and we don't know how the rule is exactly. We are trying to make, um, there is a, a rule called pro bono, when you're using a firm who help you for free. Uh, but nobody is proud enough to take this case. Uh, everybody is really afraid to take this case from a lawyer firm. Uh, so, so we have only a lawyer in Copenhagen, and this is, you know, in in Hong Kong. But they can't. They must. They, they they are not allowed to act from a foreign citizen like me. There's a lot of rules in Hong Kong about that. So, so we have a problem in Hong Kong with uh, uh, what we should do with that. But we still fight for that, and I'm quite sure one day we get it out. And we have talked with the European Parliament. Uh, not uh, David, but uh, two other people, and they will try to make uh, uh, the next months. They will work for uh, European Parliament make a connected, uh, 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 what do you call it, a paper, and ask China to give this sculpture back from the whole Parliament, from the, all the group in the Parliament. So we try to make political plus on that. Maybe it's success, maybe not. You never know. Uh, but we really fight for the sculpture, and the good thing is. It's not really for the sculpture. I think it's for the memory about the Tiananmen Crackdown, it's the memory about what happened with the, with, with the, with the democracy movement. 
as David said, this is a big, big problem to remember now, thing now because it goes so quickly. There's Gaza, there's Ukraine, and there's Trump, and there's everything going around. And people forgot what happened in Hong Kong. So we are a part of the fighting to remember what happened in Hong Kong. And I think it's really important we keep on this work. Sometimes it's losing. This is the worst? Yes, this is the worst but because there's still a lot of people in the jail who are waiting for what we're doing here in Europe. Do you have any question more? Is this for answer? It's okay to answer? Can I have more? I'm not sure if you have time. Can you consider the debating? You can sit for take it, sir. Oh, that's nice. It's fine. So, as you know, like, um, pillow chains uh, have been placed in the university in Hong Kong for many years. And it actually haven't any issues about it. And the people they've been getting used to the statues is one of the symbol of dissenting thoughts in Hong Kong. So up to 2019, the national security law is passed. Um, and what exactly the reason the Chinese government or Hong Kong government to legitimize or to legalize the behavior of such removing and it's pretty sad, it seems they can't even tolerate any critical thinking, not just to any thought of independence, but also about the, any critical thinking or even memorizing what the Chinese people had done 35 years ago. Would you think that is because it's showing a bit of offensive to the Chinese government, what they have been done before, and do you think two systems still exist, or the Chinese regime will honor the promise that two systems, the basic freedom of Hong Kong people, have been respected at the end. Um, yeah, so I, I do hope that as you are the makers of this artworks, what do you think about the situation and what else that we can do? Because we are facing such a great power about it. Um, so many people there were on the street. Um, and we exhaust all manners that we could do. No matter how peaceful that we speak out, it seems it's still being sidelined for, for many years. Um, how could we stand with Chinese people to speak genuine voice of people and let this regime could listen to their own people? I think uh, the pillar of shame has the way they take it down and the way it has something to do when we put it up. We make, and I make this one, and we put it up in Hong Kong, and since China has really, really hate me, I, not possible to go at all inside mainland China. I go, Hong Kong, I could go there, and they, they deny me entrance two times. But, but uh, normally I could go there, but, but Inside China, the government was really shocked where we put this in Hong Kong because they thought they could forget the Chiraming. But they know when we put that in Hong Kong with all the students together, then we have, uh, we have double crossed them. It was not, uh, uh, they couldn't forget it because this was there. The whole time there was there. And every time there was a, a celebration every year. So, but I think they really, really hate this sculpture. Uh, and in a way, this is a good thing for a sculpture. Because if they love it, then you have done a really big, uh, bad work. So, so I think from the beginning, China really wants to keep off of this sculpture. But they couldn't do that. They have worked with that, but they couldn't do that because it was protected by 10,000 students on the Hong Kong Jew and all the other universities who also have this exhibit. And the democracy movement. So there was a lot of power in Hong Kong, in the parliament, uh, not small group, not the, not the minority, but, but a lot of people. And a lot of young people who will define, and a lot of old people who will define, uh, fight for this sculpture. So they wait and say, okay, we can't do that now, we can't do that now. We wait till everybody is away, in jail, going to Europe, and then we take it. So I think this is the old plan. Uh, the really, this was the worst thing. Uh, this sculpture because uh, it was so famous and it was so simple. So they're saying if we take the simple down, then people forgot it. But 
China know nothing about simple. If you take the simple down and put it in a container in front of the court, then you make it stronger and stronger and stronger. The first thing will happen when they take it down, before they take it down, these two months we know they will take it down. Then the Lady Liberty group, this is a group of young people who are really good to the computer thing and make it Lady Liberty sculpture that's over there. Uh, so they scan it. They go and scan it for free. Nobody will stop them. They scan all the sculpture and start producing thousands of thousands of pillar of shame. Small, you can take one when you go. It's just there. As you can see we have a computer a printer there. So making thousands of thousands of this one and put everywhere. Uh, so they're starting already there to put it out. And then uh, even half a year after uh, they put it down, then in Easter, there is a tradition in, in Victoria Park where you could put some eggs and this kind of thing in the park. Then you use the pit of shame around, which will find. And then uh, they're, they're trying to, uh, uh, to trying to block it. But uh, so, so if you go to Hong Kong, then if you see something like that, then it's because something are making action about it. So, uh, so this is the rest of the democracy movement, some secret thing you can do. So they're still using that all over the world. And uh, I know there's a group in Hong Kong, you can buy a little copy of that, and then you support the democracy movement. So, yeah, so we have to give it free. Everybody could uh, uh, to, to copy it. It's not belong to me anymore. This belongs to everybody, uh, the sculpture. And then security law. Uh, we have the security law is, is awful. And we have, they have making an arrest order on me. Uh, but this is a strange thing. There was a, a newspaper who asked to who tell, if we, if they have making an arrest order and they asked me, uh, and we tried to see, it's, it's right, have you an arrest order? And we write to the Minister of Security. And the Minister of the Security says, mm, we don't want to say that to you. If we have an arrest order, we don't want to say that. If you are a thief, we don't want to say you are a criminal. We just arrest you. And we was quite surprised because in Germany, uh, in, 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 in Europe, it's quite normal. If you, somebody have an arrest order, you know, then you tell the people you have an arrest order, you should come to the court or something like that, and know, you know exactly what it is. But not in Hong Kong. You know nothing. You just maybe there is an arrest order on you. Maybe we will arrest you when you are making the flight going down in, 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 uh, uh, in, in, in Thailand, where they have a, uh, they, could, you could, they could take you in Thailand and this place. So now uh, we are, I'm, I'm really, really unsure where I, where I could go. Uh, but nothing happened until now. But, but the security law has a big problem for me also. And it, I think you have it for you also. They have, this guy, uh, he's a lot of money. Uh, you can. Keep him and then you can earn one million dollars. <laughs> Put him in the back and go to the China Zampas. But don't do that, we will, we will fight for him. <laughs> but, but so this is a trick they're using to, 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 uh, to not, uh, not other people are doing the same as I do. And not other artists are making a uh, conference like this. So they're trying to push out not to do that. But I think they have the opposite uh, 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 reason. We, it's just getting more and more work. So, yeah. Okay? <laughs> Have any comments on Yes? Then I think we should close the meeting and thank you for the question and, uh, and thank you to David who will help us. Uh, and, was, uh, and we are here this day and tomorrow also. Uh, and then we take it down the Friday, Friday morning, then we started to take the exhibition down. And thank you for everybody to join the meeting. Yeah, coffee and water and stuff. And you can come and, and, and get one of these pieces. You can take it there, we have it there. We have a lot of We have a lot of